Attention all Americans, we are anonymous. In early December of 2012, a crazy person in Connecticut went to a school and killed 20 school children and a number of adults. The attack in a theater in Colorado was the act of a crazy person. There are always some crazy people, and there are already laws in place making it illegal for them to obtain or to use them. It is illegal to take a firearm into a school or a theater, it is illegal to kill people, yet these laws did not stop these events because criminals do not obey the law. Only law-abiding citizens obey the law, and the law-abiding citizens are not the problem. Connecticut is the fourth highest gun control state in the country, and it's very hard to get a gun. Chicago and New York have the highest crime rates, and each has had total gun bans for years, yet gun violence increased. Mexico has a total gun ban for all citizens, but in the last three years, more than 55,000 people have been killed by guns because only the drug cartels and criminal government have them. Throughout history, authoritarian governments have used gun violence as an excuse to take people's firearms and control their population. This is exactly what Adolf Hitler did to disarm the German people, and look at the atrocities his administration did. Obama has been working hard to try and ban all semi-automatic weapons and shotguns, while at the same time, increasing the weapons and firepower that police and government agencies have. Within minutes of the Connecticut shootings, politicians were on the state-run media saying it was time to get rid of the guns and they will be talking about it for weeks to come. The Obama administration and his government-funded media have been promoting this idea for months. Every time there is a shooting performed by a crazy person, the media talks about it non-stop for weeks or months. But, when there is an illegal or unlawful shooting by police that does not fit Obama's agenda, the story is barely mentioned, such as some of the following cases. August 2, 2012. Chavez Carter was shot in the head, while handcuffed in a patrol car in police custody. Police claim he hid the gun and shot himself even though he already told his girlfriend they would go to a movie when he got out. January, 2009. Bart police officer Johannes Messel shoots and kills a handcuffed, restrained, unarmed man, while multiple other police officers are around. August, 2012. A man at the Empire State Building has killed a co-worker, and the police showed up and unleashed a hail of gunfire at the man, killing him, and the police bullets also injured many pedestrians. July, 2012. Some protesters demand answers from police about why they shot a man in the back. The police responded on the crowd of protesters that had many children under the age of 10 with rubber bullets and attack dogs. These stories got barely a whimper out of the press and certainly did not get the coverage of several weeks even though they are just as newsworthy. In addition, are the other major violent crimes where firearms were not even used. August, 2007, Connecticut. In a home invasion, a wife and two children were murdered. The wife and youngest daughter were also victims of sexual assault. Only the father-husband survived, and he was badly beaten. October, 2012. A mother and her two children were brutally murdered in California home. The suspect did not choose a firearm. October, 
2012. Two children were found stabbed to death when their mother returned home. The suspect was the children's nanny. September 2012. Siblings throat slit by intruder. The press also hardly mentions the cases where guns were used by law-abiding citizens to save lives to avoid being raped or killed. October 2012. 12-year-old Oklahoma girl shoots home intruder to protect herself after she tried to evade them. January 2012. 14-year-old boy kills intruder when a gang of four men break into his house where he was alone with his 17-year-old sister. Many would have you believe that guns are the cause of violence, but that is like saying fat people are obese because they have forks and spoons. It is caused by the person that commits the acts, not the instrument they used. If guns were the cause of the violence, then the police would be committing more violence with guns and would need disarmed instead of being more heavily armed. And the military and National Guard should never be used to perform law enforcement duties. Other Anons and many other people including Alex Jones and many others have provided lots of evidence over the years to these facts. It has been known, predicted by many for several months, and in some cases years, that Mr. Obama's intentions are to confiscate all firearms, or at least as much, as he can, to make it easier to usher in a fascist police state, to establish a one-world government, and under a one-world currency system. It was a tragedy in Connecticut, where the school children were murdered by a crazy person, and, as we have demonstrated in this video, there are countless cases where the press did not report on it as much because it was not on a political agenda. How dare Mr. Obama soil their memories and who they were and are by using this in other events for his own purpose. Guns have been used to save lives and could have been used to save other people. Mr. Obama would have you believe that guns are the cause of these crimes that CNN Fox, and the rest of mainstream media talk about so much, but it is hardly mentioned when the crimes are committed by authorities that are ever increasingly armed. Mr. Obama will tell you he needs to get guns out of the hands of criminals, but he will be taking them out of the hands of law-abiding citizens while the criminals will still have them and will have other means of inflicting harm. The law-abiding citizen will be helpless. Those that were saved by guns will become victims. And those that could have been saved by guns will have that history repeated as others end up raped and murdered. Mr. Obama, the Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution does not talk about an army that is covered elsewhere in the Constitution. It does talk about a well-regulated militia which is made up of civilians with their own weapons. The Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution does not talk about protecting government or government resources, but it does talk about being necessary for the security of the free state. The Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution does not say a single word about hunting or sport, but it does say, The people's right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. To the American people, as many laws have been banning firearms in cities such as Chicago, New York, and Washington DC have been implemented, and, as the courts get them, they are now being overthrown as unconstitutional. Even if they were not ruled on, they are an infringement to your Second Amendment rights, and you have no obligation to obey it, and the courts have no obligation to enforce it. 
No one is bound to obey an unconstitutional law, and no courts are bound to enforce it. Mr. Obama, as the chief law enforcement officer of the country, you are responsible for the conduct of those under your command. There will be no further tolerance of any of the following. Any act to infringe on any of the Bill of Rights, as identified in the U.S. Constitution. Any act to seize or locate any firearms or ammunition. Any act to control the ownership of firearms or ammunition. Any act to control the manufacturing or sales of firearms or ammunition. Any act to document ownership, purchases, or attempts to purchase firearms or ammunition. Any act to deploy or stage for deployment any military forces or government employees or agents thereof, for the purpose of asserting control over the population, or the rights of the people, or the states, as defined in the U.S. Constitution, such as would be used in martial law. Any act to write, form, negotiate, enter into, or comply with any international treaty that would or could do any of the points mentioned previously. Read versus Covert, 354 U.S. 1, 1957. Treaties do not confer powers not authorized by Constitution. Any action taken by you to attempt to perform those acts, or similar acts, as interpreted by the American people, or any attempt by you to skirt your responsibility to the true office of the presidency, will be viewed by many people as your willful act of insurrection and treason against the American people, as those acts would be willful disregard of your oath of office. Any further attempt by you, your administration, law enforcement, or those under authority of the presidency to perform or assist in performance with any body attempting such acts will be viewed by many people as your willful act of insurrection and treason against the American people, as those acts would be willful disregard of your oath of office. Any further attempt by you, your administration, law enforcement, or those under authority of the presidency to do any of those acts mentioned or anything similar will be viewed by many people as your willful act of insurrection and treason against the American people, as those acts would be willful disregard of your oath of office. Upon such acts, it is the responsibility of the Vice President and Cabinet members to immediately exercise their authority under the 25th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution to remove you from office. Failure of such act may be viewed as an act of insurrection and treason by the Vice President and Cabinet members as such failure would be willful disregard of each of their oath of office. Upon failure of the Vice President and Cabinet members to perform such duty of your removal, it then falls on Congress to immediately force your removal by legal means. Failure of any member of Congress to perform such duty, or to hinder it in any way, will be viewed by many people as an act of insurrection and treason against the American people, as such failure would be willful disregard of each person's oath of office. Upon failure of the Congress to perform such duty, it will be the responsibility upon the United States Supreme Court for failure to act in past or present to rectify said situation and as such, will be viewed by many people as an act of insurrection and treason against the American people, as such failure would be willful disregard of each Supreme Court Justice's oath of office. Upon failure of all the aforementioned bodies to perform such duty, it will be the authority and duty of any and all members of the United States Armed Forces to remove the President, Vice President, Cabinet members, and members of Congress and the U.S. Supreme Court justices from power by military force. Failure by all military members to perform such duties will constitute as an act of civil war against the American people by said authorities. This video has links to other sources. This is for news and education reasons, and so falls under fair use, but no doubt, some people will try and have it removed. Download it, and re-upload it, or pass it along. Let the truth be known. We are anonymous. We do not forgive. We do not forget.